something that um, I always say feel first before you communicate, which means getting in touch with your own emotions and, and how you're doing, being more mindful and present so that you can have a better interaction. And feel, of course, is the face your fears, engage with empathy, use ethics and good judgment and unleash the love. We have the pleasure of welcoming Deirdre Breckenridge today to our interview series. I'm Ashwara Jain from the People Hum team. Before we begin, just a quick introduction of People Hum. People Hum is an end-to-end, one-view integrated human capital management automation platform, the winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for HCM that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work. We run the People Hum blog and video channel which receives upwards of 200,000 visitors a year and publish around two interviews with well-known names globally every month. And now for our guest. Dietra is the CEO of Pure Performance Communications. She's a communications strategist and the author of the book Answers for Modern Communicators, an effective guide to business communication. She's also an author at LinkedIn Learning and she loves to give back to the PR industry by writing books and speaking on topics including marketing, PR, branding and social media. We are very happy to have someone of a stature and expertise in our interview series today. Welcome, Deirdre. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you. It's so great to be here with you. Thank you so much for your time. So, Deirdre, can we start a little bit, you know, rewinding your journey and what has brought you to Pure Performance Communications today? Sure. So, I was one of those students who knew all the way back in high school that I was going to be in communications, if you can imagine. I won an essay contest for a radio station. And at the time, there weren't as many choices in communications as there are now (laughs) that we see. And a guidance counselor said to me, you can be a PR person or you can be a journalist. And when I learned about public relations and how it's all about changing opinion and reputation and working with the media, that's the way that I went. And I did that. I was always working agency side. Then I pivoted and became an entrepreneur and owned my own agency for years. And that's exciting in and of itself. And then turn the page so that I could write a lot of books, create a lot of courses and do one-on-one consulting work. And that's what I do for my company, Pure Performance. Oh, that's awesome. And what do you think is, you know, kind of the hardest part of the, or the most difficult challenge of your career? Oh, well, I mean, I guess it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. So I look at anything with the glass is half full, right? So I see the way that the media landscape changes, technology changes, consumer behavior is constantly changing. And that's just a way to stay on your toes and figure out new ways that you're going to reach people and build relationships and really be able to create some kind of impact. But has it been challenging? Absolutely, because everything's changing. And look at the situation we're in now, more changes and challenges. Yeah, absolutely. This is such a unique situation. And I think it's definitely affected uh, communications as a function, right? So can you also elaborate about your work as, you know, communication strategist? What is it all about? Okay, so as a strategist, uh, I mean, I've been in public relations and marketing for 30 plus years. And I have always focused on strategic communications, understanding your audience, that message development, the right channels, your measuring, and making these real connections. What I've realized, and this is something that was a big wake up call for me, it was a personal tragedy with my family that has led me to feel (laughs) and much more emotional intelligence. You can take strategic communications and make great connections, but the difference between actually building a deeper relationship comes from what I call feel, which is a communications model. It was done after I embarked on a 52 plus week research journey studying millennials that you face fears, which means you're more open and inclusive. You engage with empathy. You always use your ethics and good judgment and you unleash the love so that you can match the passion 
from the people who you need to connect with. And when you can feel, the relationship grows. That is so interesting. And so on this 52 week journey of researching about millennials, um, how do you think is the best way to cope with a generation that is a little bit different from the rest of them? They are probably more rebellious or they have their own thoughts, you know. So what do you think is the best strategy to handle millennials? I think that I do a lot of work with leaders today. And it is to understand that the study that I did, I talked to over 75 millennials. And I did speak with some members of Gen Z who were on the coattails of millennials. Millennials want the people around them to feel. All of the interviews that I did, it focused on why don't leaders want to hear more of our perspective? Why aren't they open and more inclusive? Specifically, whether it was, it could be through any channel, but pinpointing in the organization as well as on social media. Why aren't they taking the time to be more caring and kind and to have understanding? They specifically relate to um, transparency and good judgment. They're, they're very sensitive to uh, what's going on in terms of ethics out there in communication and also matching the passion. So millennials and Gen Z very much are about experiences, causes, sustainability of the planet, human rights, animal rights, and they're going to give brands business who also can match that passion. And they want their leaders to be vocal and to take a stance. So that's some of the things that I learned, which it's not so easy for companies and leaders to feel, <laughs> although they should. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. It's it's really difficult to produce an inclusive and engaging environment when you don't understand or you do not connect with the mindset of a millennial, right? So as leaders, you know, what is it that leaders can do to change the way they uh, look at different generations? Are there some strategies that they can implement? Yes. So one of the things... Um, I heard several stories along these lines where millennials would say, in order for me to share, there has to be trust. Trust in the environment and an open, safe, feeling safe in an environment. And that comes from a leader being more vulnerable. So there are a number of ways that you can approach this, whether it's in your team meetings, sharing things that aren't always um, what's so great and what's, but and what's going on, but more things that are affecting you and what's affecting the team. And what isn't always going right? Because millennials, they know <laughs> that nothing is perfect and you have to show your vulnerability. There is also um, just around, one millennial shared a story about how disappointed her team was in their, the leaders of their company because one of their clients was in the ride sharing business and it was at a time of safety in ride sharing. And inside of the company, the leaders were very vocal about safety and, and how they were feeling, but they weren't lending their voice externally on social media. And that for millennials was, well, why not? Why can't you take a stance? Why can't you show your passion? So these are all steps, but it, it really comes down to truly understanding the, the behavior, the way that they want to work, what their technology looks like, why they prefer texting over other forms of technology. It takes a lot of digging to be, be able to communicate effectively. So uh, right now we're all working from home, right? In, in most cases, unless you're an essential business. And for millennials and even Gen Z, this is something that feeds their spirit, their entrepreneurial in nature, design your day. You don't have to take the time to go into work. It's time well spent. This actually helps them and is better for them. Uh, this is also a generation uh, who doesn't live to work, but works to live. Millennials, like also Gen Z, 
are looking for more feedback. And it's really important to approach feedback the right way. There's always going to be challenges. And, you know, with these particular generations, the feedback has to always be focused on the behavior and helping them to exceed and not anything that feels like a personal attack. The six month reviews that were always put in place when I owned my own agency, we would have the, the one year annual and then there would be a six month interim review. That doesn't work so well with younger generations because if you pile on too much at once, it's overwhelming. It is so much better to have these regular touch points um, where one-on-ones so that they can have the feedback and be able to digest it. And you're kind of working together on the behavior so that whatever the work performance is, is getting better. And they feel good about it too. So it's a continuous feedback cycle, which works with millennials. Yes. So how do you think that engaging uh, millennials and Gen Z as a workforce on social media platforms are changing with time and how do you craft a strategy for digital media across you know several generations so it is definitely changing and you know there's two there's two answers to this because when you are marketing and you're reaching them on social media during a pandemic that's going to look different because we all know that we don't want to look like we're jumping on some kind of a bandwagon that the the marketing and what you're sharing is actually thoughtful um gen z i I was just looking at a study from amplify solutions that came out they did a study of gen z during COVID, and basically gen z said we understand that businesses need to market to us and there will be advertising they're more accepting as long as it's thoughtful so that's just a note to all businesses out there. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can communicate, but it has to be thoughtful. It's going to be different. Um, So reaching generations on social media and crafting a strategy, no matter what you do, it's always about listening, auditing what works. Where do people expect you to communicate with them? Where do they want you? And where do they not want you or do they not want to be? So if you're going to Facebook to find Gen Z or millennials, not a great idea. You would be much better off on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, um, LinkedIn, all Gen X, and I'm sure boomers are there too. And although younger generations know that they need to be there, they're not necessarily as active, but they go to Reddit (laughs) for business information and they have their subreddits. Uh, It's interesting because even my stepson, when he was looking for his um, internship, he went to Reddit to find out how Amazon does its internship hiring to get the insights. So it's very different. It's understanding where they are, where they want you to be, what type of content right down to the media format, the length of the content, shorter, shorter, shorter for younger generations. And then once you do connect, how are you going to feel is really important. And how are you gonna measure all of that? Because why bother communicating, connecting and growing the relationship if you don't actually measure it? So there's a bit of a strategy in a nutshell. And also establishing credibility as a brand. There are so many brands going out there, aligning your brand with um, others who are in the same space, having influencers work with your brand, get your brand ambassadors to share for you, that credible third party endorsement, you know, I'm putting my PR hat on now, media, bloggers, they all help to lift your credibility. And then of course your advertising and your marketing supports that. When you bring good quality content, that's the key. So your content marketing, your quality content, people rally around good content and they're going to share what excites them. They're going to share what helps them. They're going to share what they think is thoughtful and what really energizes them. Oh, absolutely. And what do you think is, is a complete no, no for, uh, you know, content marketing or creating a social media strategy? I think if you take it from a 
spammy me point of view, you're not going to do very well. So this is, especially with younger generations, all about um, connecting with them and their experience and what type of experience you can provide that fits into their world. So understanding them is of utmost importance. And you know anything that just looks like you are clearly all about yourselves and not really listening, it's not gonna help you. And then what ends up happening is that they get excited about you and then they start, start sharing and then there you don't have to push <laughs> so hard with your content because you've got a bunch of amplifiers who can get others to act as well. Yes, yes, that's true. And uh, you know, there are a lot of startups as well that always struggle with establishing a brand name. So are there any tips that you'd like to give them to help achieve their goal through social media marketing? Yeah, I mean, for the startups out there, make sure, I mean, always focus on your customers, because if you think about it, your customers are the ones that's your main audience. You want them to be able to use your products or your service and to speak from a place of happiness, right? And then once they do, it's getting them as your brand champions to speak on your behalf and then use ways to build relationships with your community, with, you know, use public relations is great for establishing trust and credibility. So you want to be able to tap into media, which media today is your from your online news to your blogs, to your Twitterati, your Instagrammers, right? Your YouTubers. That is a great way to really um, sort of amplify as you're building your brand and your content, you're getting others to help you. Those relationships are so valuable as a startup. And I would just um, also take note of the quality of the content that you put out. People are watching, they're listening, they're hungry for content, but it has to be good content. That it, It's always the quality over the quantity. And take the time, if somebody is willing to comment and to share their thoughts, even if it's not the most positive, you know, feedback, if somebody takes the time to share something and to say, hey, this could have been better, or hey, I really like this, take the time to comment back and to thank them. That gift of feedback is so important as you're a startup and a growing brand. I'm watching my colleagues, I'm always in, in awe of people who are giving and helping right now and that is so important and I think business professionals and students and anybody is looking for that kind of help. Especially younger generations, um, you know, they do have anxiety and there is more depression with this stay home. They're social creatures and they want to be out. So any ways that you, any brands really that are helping them to connect, to have social interactions, those apps are so important. They're, they're doing their games. They're the ones that are really going to win. And also, Online courses and professional development, that's also what younger generations are looking at for the future, thinking of their futures as well. Oh yes, absolutely. There is some level of transparency in this that they like and they appreciate. So if there are organizations uh, doing good work right now, I think they will definitely get noticed by a lot of millennials out there and even Gen Z. And uh, I, think, I think that's really important. And do you think that you know, the future of work is going to be different now. What do you think is going to change in, in the coming few months or years? So it's interesting because a lot of people are feeling a big difference and thinking this is the future in terms of, you know, working remotely all the time, where in essence, this has been happening for a lot of professionals already. So myself as a consultant, I've been training and doing consulting calls through Zoom for a while now. My husband, who works at EY, he's been um, doing work hoteling, which means he really works from home. His office is adjacent to mine. But once a week, he would go into the office and it literally is sign up for a conference room or sign up for an office. You just plug in. It's not like the desks that 
we used to have before with the pictures on them and everybody had their, their workstation. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that and businesses will be prepared. Businesses are now thinking of all the connections and, and what they have to do to stay up and running for this future, which was kind of forced on us as a result of a global pandemic. Yes, absolutely. And there are so many people who, you know, brought in, uh, brought in home into work, which is not really natural for them. And then when they have to turn their cameras on, it's just a little awkward for them because they are just so not used to it. So it's kind of That's funny. You know? It is. I, I, um, I know a lot of my colleagues are moms and I was having a, a Zoom call the other day. I was catching up with a colleague and her daughter was there and she's like, oh, you know, hold on one second. Her little girl comes on and she says hi to me. But her little girl wanted to have a Zoom play date. So, you know, who would have thought that a seven-year-old would be having a Zoom play date while her mom is conducting business? But this is all the, the new normal that you have to navigate. And, and kudos to all the moms out there who are making it work, and dads too, because it, it is quite the adjustment. <laughs> yes, absolutely agree with that. Uh, and, you know, to wrap this up, uh, Deirdre, can I ask you if you have any other important sound bites that you'd like to leave our viewers with? Oh, thank you so much. That I think that sounds very interesting and I would love to take that, uh, you know, a test out there. Uh, oh, great. Was, I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. It was really wonderful talking to you and I, I really, really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your views with us. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. I really appreciate the opportunity. Let's keep in touch and take care of yourself. Have a healthy time ahead of you and have a great day. Thank you. You too. Be safe. <laughs>